Hi friends. Today I really want to talk about activity trays and hands-on activities for your elementary kids. This is especially going to be helpful if your child is a preschooler, a kindergartner, or a first grader. I have found that once a child hits kind of that 9, 10-ish area when they start getting a lot more independent and they have their own hobbies, that the activity trays become a little less of a priority with the homeschooling. Um, so really you're looking at between like those two, three-year-olds and the eight-year-olds that these activity trays are going to be really helpful or can be used as a huge part of their homeschooling um, or as your homeschooling methodology. So first I want to talk about a tray. Now I have a couple different kinds of trays, but I really wanted to focus on, and I'm going to set these aside here, trays because I brought a bunch of materials, are trays that I like the most. And I have to say that these, these square wooden trays are my favorite. They're on Amazon. I think they come in a pack of four, but they have handles. They're really lightweight. I can put a whole sheet. So I'll use an example here. I can put a whole sheet of paper and it sits in there. And I love that. So um, these are my favorite trays to use. They're kind of in the middle, they're middle for price points. You can find cheaper trays. You'll see that there's more expensive trays. So they're kind of in the middle for it. But if you only need four or eight trays, then it's, it's not a big deal. And it is wood, which I really like. There's gonna be some people, especially if you're Waldorf or Montessori that you really are gonna want, or Charlotte Mason, you want more natural um, items in your room. So this is my favorite tray. And then you'll put whatever worksheet. So I, I brought out a measuring one. So I've got these measuring cards. So they're the animals and there's a line above and below. And you take ruler and you put the ruler and the measuring cards. And then depending on your child, they can, if they're younger, they're gonna have uh, the squares that they'll fill in. And if they're older, they can do centimeters or inches. Um, and then that's the number or the letter that's on the card. So I know what card they were measuring to see if they're right. And then there is an answer key. I'm really big on answer keys for kids. Again, this is kind of a very Montessori uh, way of doing it. Um, where it gives all the answers for it. So once they've done it, they can look it up themselves and they don't have to ask me. They don't have to wait for me to come around. They can figure it all by themselves. This is great for confidence for a child and encouraging independence. So that is an activity that you would put out just like that. Now, some other things that I feel like are really helpful are just different size bowls and stuff. Um, again, this is really good if your child is in preschool, kindergarten, or first grade. So there's really small bowls, you know, something like this, I might put dice in. Um, then I have uh, kind of more of a softer square shaped bowl, wooden bowl. These are all wooden. Then I might put something in this one has erasers and erasers, little mini erasers are really great for counting. Now, if you have a toddler slash preschooler that's still putting stuff in their mouth, you may want to put these aside until you can sit there with them and do it so that that way it doesn't become a choking hazard. But I love these little round bowls. Um, I got these at, um, I don't remember where I got these, but I'll have to put some links to things that are similar to these in size and everything. But I use these a lot and they fit in the tray, right? So if you're doing accounting, you'll put your counting cards in there and you'll set your bowl in with whatever they're counting and then they can pull everything off themselves because this is a really lightweight tray all by themselves. Um, maybe two, year, two or three year olds might have a little difficulty with this size tray, but I think most kids are gonna be fine. Um, some other items that I find really helpful with activity trays are these glass. Again, not if they're like two or three and are still putting stuff in their mouth but they're glass beads. These are great for counting. And I even have this square, like plastic acrylic kind of container that the glass beads can go into. And again, that can sit right in there and kids love them. It's fun. It's not just a worksheet. They're pulling these trays off and it really 
gets into their curiosity as to what they're doing, uh, which I love. You can also do, for, for counting and tactile stuff, um, we'll use pom-poms. For young kids who are still learning their pincher grasp, you can put tweezers, like jumbo tweezers, and they can, oops, there it goes. Um, and they can use these to put these in where they want it to go. And of course there's various sizes. This one's bigger and some are smaller. Um, and then I have so many different kinds of little mini erasers because it's so helpful when children are learning how to count and learning basic addition and subtraction to use mini erasers. They're not super expensive as long as children aren't putting things in their mouth. Um, so again, probably kindergarten or older, four or five year olds to um, eight, nine year olds. These are great ways, and I just lost another one. So I have insects, I kind of, I go by the seasons. A lot of the themes that I do, I go by seasons. So I've got holiday ones. So this is like Christmas time, like stars and ornaments. These are bugs. I think I have like raindrops in here. I have watermelon for summer. I have these um, round ones that are kind of rainbow-like that are a little bit more general. Uh, oh yeah, I do. I have like clouds and water, clouds and water theme right here. Um, I have hearts and like friendship ones. And um, so I just wanted to, I wanted to just talk about the trays and some of the materials that I use to put trays out. You can put your flashcards out. It's great for a lot of counting hands-on material on that end. You can also do things for English and language arts, science, um, and even geography. And I will kind of put out more videos showing actual activity trays. There's also a lot of great resources that do that. And I will share that as well, resources uh, like websites that show a lot of different ways that you can do activity trays for your elementary kids, especially preschoolers and kindergartners on how to um, keep a nice rotation and a nice variety without feeling overwhelmed. I usually don't rotate my trays out on my shelf um, more than once a month, not normally. Um, it gives the child an opportunity to practice the trays multiple times over. Now, if they seem really bored with a tray and they're not using it all, then I might switch it out, switch like one tray out um, after it's sitting out for a couple weeks if they're not showing any interest at all. Um, but you haven't done anything wrong. That is one tip I will say. <laughs> Sometimes I used to take it personally if I would like put all these trays out and there were like one or two that my kids like just didn't want to touch and it's like I had to sit down with them to really get them to want to do that tray. It isn't. It's just where they're at. Um, maybe it's just not something that for them they're interested or that they're ready for. Um, you can still make them down, sit down and do a small unit lesson with them, but if they still don't seem interested, just be like, okay, I didn't do anything wrong. It's just, that's not where they're going. Observe them and then switch it out for something that they seem maybe a little bit more interested in. So that is a little bit of talking about activity trays, both, um, not only what you can put out and the kind of materials you can use, um, but also just some tips on when you're rotating and when you're putting them out. I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at myteentangerine.com.